Robin Hood stride near Elton in Derbyshire with its millennia of ancient history. I've been visiting here for years, wild camping, dog walks, etc. And nearly every time I visit, I tend to find something new to explore. And this is no exception. Now, the Elton village, it was recorded in the Doomsday Book as Eltoon, E-L-T-U-N-E. And it's probably named after a Saxon princess who lived in the area over a thousand years ago. Now, between Dudwood Farm and Robin Hood Stride, pretty close to the path, just behind Watts Cliff Quarry, is this hut circle. So this would be the first one to find. A hut circle, in archaeology terms, is described as a circular or oval depression in the ground with evidence of a low stone wall around it that used to be the foundation of the roundhouse. And this, the superstructure of such a house would have been made of timber and thatch. Hut circles can be between 5 to 25 feet in diameter, with the rocks themselves possibly being 2 3 foot wide and around 3 foot high. Our past survey suggests that there was at least three hut circles in the area, that two of them were very damaged when they were originally found, and have since been almost swallowed up by the undergrowth. But I might have found one of them, one of the others, but this existing one has a number three carved into the tallest stone of the circle. It was difficult to spot, I had to clear the moss from it, but it were there, and this is what suggests there was two more originally. Now it's constructed of a ring of continuous stones and it's possibly a Romano-British building AD 43 to AD 400 thought to be possibly a shepherd's hut but if there were three of them it could have been a small settlement The Robin Hood Stride is also called the Mock Beggar's Mansion It's so named because of its silhouette and the appearance of having two chimneys Standing on Hart Hill Moor gives a resemblance of a mansion. The more popular name is vaguely connected with the outlaw Robin Hood, but also a giant green man who stood astride two pinnacles of the outcrop and pissed in the field below. The stride is surrounded by monuments and settlements from the Neolithic, Bronze Age, Iron Age up to the Romano British period. It remained a significant place for millennia and I think originally it was a proto-temple, a natural monument before man-made ones was constructed. It suggested Neolithic use for the outcrop in the stone circle and it backed up that the, the midsummer moon's maximum is framed between the two chimneys of the tall when viewed from the circle, which I'll have to check out next year. And it could possibly be a dru druidic altar. Plus it also stands on the old portway, an ancient track that crossed the limestone plateau of the White Peak. The large number of prehistoric monuments this track passes must indicate the ancient origins. Now, it's probably not here where the ancient tribes lived. They were important for another reason, as the rocks and the twisting pathways and uneven landscape seem rather to lend themselves to a minimal population. Reminds me of a ritual landscape, a place where the lives and the deaths of clans would have been marked within the great stones, and it would have been a perfect place for air burials. One stone I notice it sort of slopes down to like a trough with a drain away, possibly for the body juices. And it's known that air burial is one way to clean the bones of the dead. And it's thought that our ancestors believe that. The process of passing on was not complete until the bones were clean and the dead could not become ancestral guardians protecting the well-being of the clan in the afterlife until their bones were properly prepared. Now some think the Druze may have used these rocks for their religious rites and celebrations of life and it thought it was usual to enclose their places of worship and the outcrop was said to be enclosed by a large wall it appears to have surrounded the rocks near the bottom of the hill where they fell away. And all across the stride, there are at least seven groups of probable cut marks, they look like them to me. Six on the outcrop, and one on the large boulder to the southeast, which shows more ritual use. Now, between Robin Hood's stride 
and the stone circle there's what's been rumored allegedly it's a magic fairy pond water plays an important role in many legends and myths with mythological water beings and gods and stories of heroes all connected with water but also connected with portals to the other world home to fantastic creatures and there are also dangerous places and one legend connected with the pool is Jenny Greenchief. I think I went to school with her. And she's supposed to be a malicious mermaid who lurks below the dark waters, ready to strike at anyone who enters. And there's a story that in, in the 1940s, a report describes a strange creature climbing out of the water, and it was belie believed to be Jenny Greenchief. Crackcliffe Rocks Hermitage. This is also part of the old portway, an ancient track that crossed the White Peak. And portway means a public highway. And it's more often than not associated with the Romans. But the large number of prehistoric monuments this trackway passes will surely indicate its more ancient origins. I assume it's caves with its crucifix carved into the cave. It has been dated to 13th, 14th century. And the identity of the hermit is not known. And on the rock face outside the shelter, there's grooves chiselled in like sockets for timber beams, indicating where a roof structure of a building would join the cave. Very similar to Hermit's Cave at Dale Abbey. But there are records at Haddon Hall of ye old hermit directing travellers to the hall and supplying rabbits. Now, Crackcliffe Rocks Hill Fort lies on the Gritstone Promontory, where I've well camped on a few occasions. But I didn't know it was a hill fort, but it was only, only really discovered recently. Now, during the Iron Age, a variety of different types of defensive settlements began to be constructed and occupied in the northern uplands of the Peak District. The most obvious and well-known sites are hill forts built on prominent locations. But in addition, there's a range of smaller sites, sometimes with enclosed areas and defined as defended settlements. You know, the people who lived here may have been small family groups and then close settlement below on the moor being used as a farmstead and the promontory fort used for defence as it's protected by a steep, steep drop to the south and east. Crackcliffe Hill Falls it is very well preserved if not extremely overgrown and it's unusual in the use of natural rock outcrops in place of an earthen rampart and it may have been augmented by a timber palisade I don't think there's been any excavations here
And the views from the top are amazing. They're looking out over Birchover, Doltor, and Nine Ladies at Stanton Moor. This late Neolithic to early Bronze Age circle only has four grit stone off stats, with the stone standing over seven feet tall, and it would have been over 40 feet in diameter originally, and the stones are the tallest in Derbyshire, still standing. They stand isolated on farmland on Hurltill Moor, near Robin Hood Stride and they're almost due west from Dole Tor and the ritual complex of Stanton Moor and the Nine Ladies. But their size and bulk alone would seem to set them apart from the others as being part of a different tradition, or perhaps an earlier date something. It's a bit confusing or uncertain whether there were originally nine stones, as in the name, but one theory being that nine is a corruption of noon, Set to be the time when, according to folklore, fairies will gather at the site and dance. And it is from the centre of this circle that the major southern moon can be observed between the pinnacles of the stride, and it forms a triangle with the tor and the stride. Need to go and see that next year. Uh, Thomas Bateman. The local antiquarian noted seven stones in his 1848 book and there was a slightly raised area within the stones which could have been plough damaged remains of a tumulus or grave mound. And he did conduct an excavation of the mound and he recovered some polified pottery shards and a number of flints which seemed to have been burnt. Now, wandering around the area, I may have found one or two other of the missing stones close by, reused in a stone wall or as gateposts. Now, here's a little interesting story I found, which might show you into the lives of our ancestors. It's a story of a farmhand who was resting from his labours against one of the stones and he found a pipe full of tobacco. After lighting the pipe, he stood and watched as the stones became transparent and through the surface he could see into the fairy realm. Magic mushrooms are what? This tale may have its origins in an older memory, perhaps of a time when sacred herbs and the like were used to enhance visions and allow the priesthood of the stones to glimpse into the, the other world. Now, Hot Hill Cairn, this is about 100 yards further down from the circle. And there's some large stones partially exposed. Now, there is a possibility it could be a small hut circle. But with it being in the middle of this sacred land, you'd expect it to be a cairn. I don't know if it's been excavated at all.
Aztán mondok a fejhez karabnak alá. Now this curiosity is about 20 yards from the can. This got my curiosity going. Very large rocks fitted nicely at right angles. It reminded me a bit of mining low. I'd like to know more about it if anybody can find anything. It is a bit random just to be sat in the middle of a field, especially with all the ancient monuments around it, but there's nothing about it anyway. Look at that. I don't know. Oh, this is the last one. It's one I've not been able to visit because it's on private land and it's Castle Ring Hill Fort and it's on a small hill on private land behind the Hartill Moor Farm and it's a second defended settlement and it's sort of oval in shape and protected by two banks and ditches to all sides apart from the south east where it's disappeared it's the smallest of those known in the region. Just so much in the area, isn't they? 